right guys, welcome back to another one of Lucky Strike Living and today we are going to go in depth with our red snapper setups because season is only a few days away. Uh, what's the date today? Today is the 30th. Today is the 30th. It opens June 1st for us and June 14th for the recreational guys. So we're going to jump right into our setups. Um, let's see, we're going to start with our conventionals. So this is one of our main conventionals. I use the Newell's and they are awesome. They are built like tanks. They are a little bit older, but phenomenal reels with a seven foot star rod, medium heavy. And I like to use 60 pound test braided line for all of my conventional reels. And fairly simple, uh, probably got three, 400 yards of the braided line on there. We're not typically fishing very deep um, in the Gulf. It's typically for a red snapper, 170 foot, somewhere in there. But that is that setup. Next and my most favorite, and my customers absolutely love it, is my Newell with my slow pitch jigging rod. Can you read that? Mm hmm Six foot, medium light, 150 to 400 grains with the 60 pound braid. Sometimes I fluctuate between that, but this is a fan favorite for everybody. It's super, super light, super strong. I have seen people pick up, uh, I think it was a 24 pack of water with this little dinky thing. And that rod that you saw first cannot do it. It is amazing. Next, for our people that don't like conventionals, I have a 55 Quantum Reliance. Uh, Quantum has been awesome for us and they work extremely, extremely well. On our spinners, I typically put 25 to 30 pound braid, depending on the currents and things like that. Um, but that's for the people who don't like conventional reels. Some people love them, some people don't like them, so we always have a mixture of both. And this is a, can you read that right there? It's, no, you can. A seven foot medium moderate action. Plenty strong enough, but yet light enough, strong enough that you can catch a bunch of fish. So those are my setups. Um, next, we are going to go into our tackle and how we catch these elusive red snapper and red groupers. Uh, so easiest is a chicken rig. You've seen it before. Your weight is below your hook. And for a red snapper, I typically like a six to eight ounce weight. That will typically solve all your problems with currents. Um, because we are fishing deeper, we have to change out the weights every once in a while. Our circle hook of choice that I like is Gamagatsu. They're one of my favorites and either a five to eight aught. This is a six aught, but either one will do. Um, Nothing fancy, just your standard chicken rig hook is above your weight, send it all the way to the bottom. Next, for your more adventurous fishermen, are our slow pitch jigs. Again, every day is different, so the current changes. So we've got a 5 ounce right here, a 3 ounce, and a 100 grain right there. So on full moons, I'm definitely going to use the five ounce because the current is absolutely smoking out there, especially in that depth of water. Also something that works extremely well are hair jigs. Again, this one is four ounces. It's like the size of your hand. Mm -hmm. Super heavy, we'll get to the bottom quickly. Um, Kind of the same deal as our slow pitch, just a different presentation. Some days they like the hair versus slow pitch. You've got to make sure you have everything. Next, my second favorite are your lighter jig heads. And anywhere from two to four ounces. And I love them because you can put a little piece of bait on the hook. And if for some reason that bait falls off or the fish takes it, you still have the hair to entice the fish to bite it. But my favorites are pink and white. Next, if the current is slower, this is an ounce and a half, and you can see the bullet-shaped head. That will get to the bottom very, very quickly. 
versus this one. Comparatively speaking, will go slower because it's not as aerodynamic, water dynamic. <laughs> so lighter current, this one will work very, very well. And if you get the fish chummed up a little bit and they start coming up in the water column, you can use your ounce, ounce and a half um, jig heads. My absolute favorite of all of these would be a lighter slow pitch jig. I absolutely love slow pitching. You can put some bait on it. This one's beat up because in the video you're seeing right now, this jig did some work. But everybody can do the live bait. Squid works super, super well. Um, pinfish works really well. Uh, threads, frozen, cut bait, everything works very, very well when the fish are biting. It's up for you guys to determine which ones they like the best when they're not biting that well. And that's why you got to have a little bit of everything and have uh, multiple options and different people fishing with different things. Not everybody should have just cut bait. Not everybody should just have live bait. Now that we've gone over all of the gear that I use on all of my trips, I'm going to go a little bit deeper and tell you guys how I like to find my spots. So in Naples, Southwest Florida, red snapper like deep water for us. So typically that 140 foot of water plus. I've caught a couple inside of that, but typically that 140, 150 number um, is really where you start to find them. And then of course they catch them in Pulley Ridge, which is 155 miles offshore. So anywhere in there is where we like to go. On all of my trips, I will have um, the majority of people using chicken rigs. And then I will have one person using a bucktail jig with a piece of squid or thread. And then one person on the slow pitch. So if you've got six people on the boat, I'll have four people on the chicken rig, one guy on the vertical slow pitch, and then I'll have one guy on this. Because like I said, some days they will only eat this with a piece of squid or thread. Some days they'll only eat this, and it's our job to figure out on that particular day, on that particular spot, which one they're biting. Now, if you catch your fish in this spot and you move over to another spot, it's completely different. Don't expect what happened on that last spot to be what happened on this spot. So again, same thing, four guys here, one here, and two over here. Last but not least is leader. I think leader is super, super important because you have to change it a lot. Um, I like 50 for most of my stuff. Um, again, if the fish are biting, you can use 80 or 100 and it's super easy and you're never gonna lose anything for the most part. But when the fish get a little finicky later in June, July, when everybody's been catching them, scale down. The worst thing in the world is to go to a spot and not have any bites because of your equipment being too heavy. I like to start low at 50, sometimes 60, and then if I need to work my way up, I can. But if you're starting high, you're not gonna get the bites and you're gonna think those fish aren't there. At least in my opinion, that's what you should do. I like the cigar salmon, but any type of mono 50, 60, 70, 80 works just fine. All right, guys, now that we have gone over everything, we are going to take you offshore to our scouting trip and show you how each one of these things work and prove to you guys that you can catch them on just about anything when they're biting. But I will see you guys offshore. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Yo. You need some milk too? Yeah, I need some milk. You need some milk? <laughs> Give me the milk. Get, get your milk, boy. <laughs> I got your milk right here. Come on, boy. The milkman is here. <laughs> Take you to the milking plant. This is oh, nice. this is just as oh, oh. Snapper, baby. Good snapper. Oh, this one TV oh, right, right there. there. Good to go. Yep, good to go. See you in a week. See you, buddy. Got fish. Got fish. I got a, oh my oh, god. Oh. Get him.
on the noodle. <laughs> on the neon noodle. <laughs> Gotta get in shape for this kind of stuff. Yeah. Ooh. For the week. All looking like a, the right time, the right kind, Gordy. Ooh. Oh, oh, Papa Gordy's. Oh, oh no. 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 Oh, it's the right uh, kind. Yes, oh, hoo, sir. Hoo, hoo, hoo. It's the right kind. There you go. Look at that stud. All right, guys. One week before season, looking for them. We found a couple. See you in a week. What do you got for bait? A uh, two ounce gig with a piece of squid. Nice. That's deep, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, giant trigger fish. <laughs> She's been in the rocks four times. And finally. I see him. A... Nice! Jiminy Christmas. Golly Molly, that's a good one there. Little what a horrible day. Yeah, what well, horrible. Hey, uh... Uh oh. Four. Double cheek <laughs> <laughs> Double Doubled up. Tripled up. Oh, Almost ah. quadrupled up. That's a good one there. What is this guy doing? Doubled up. I'm oh, tripled, tripled up. up. Oh, tripled. Oh, no. Somebody get it. Somebody get it. Oh. One. That's a little one. <laughs> Two. That one's right here. Three. And a big one. Goodness. Wait, AJ, red snapper, red grouper. Oh. Typically, the chicken rigs work the best with squid, cut bait, pinfish, things like that. Probably an even second, if not a little bit worse, is that two ounce jig head with, again, shrimp, uh, squid, threads, things like that. And if you find a spot where they're elevated, then you can use those jig heads and it works super, super well. What do you got? And, or, pick the rustiest, nastiest looking lure in the box to catch the biggest one. Thank you. That's right. So to show you guys what this piece of bottom looks like, it is 159 foot, nothing too special. When we first got here, there was almost nothing. Very little on the bottom. And we fished it, fished it, fished it, and I said, all right, guys, 30 seconds, another minute, and all of a sudden, bang, we hooked one. And then another Rise minute later, one. boom, another one, boom, another one, boom, another one. So just because you don't catch one right away does not mean that you need to leave, go somewhere else. Give it a couple minutes, and these fish were on this piece of bottom somewhere. And uh, once we caught that first one, they started coming. Cutie. Almost as big as a jig. Different spot. Shows up way better. But they're smaller. So most people would think that that looks way better than that last spot. And it might be like that tomorrow but fish it a couple minutes see what's going on catch three or four or five because especially in the gulf i'm sure a lot of other places action brings more action if you hook one they start swimming and spitting up a bunch of the stuff that's in their bellies and then it creates a chum slick down there but uh, that's what it looks like and who else knows what do you think Oh yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> back to back to back to back, non-stop, non-stop right here recording. What lure was that? This was a gambler jig head and a half of a thread. Half of a thread. Nice. 
What are you out of breath for? <laughs> I can't even. I can't even pull. <laughs> oh, another nice one. I've caught so many these days. <laughs> That's such a pretty fish. Yeah. That's beautiful. Gorgeous. Absolutely. Beautiful. Such a pretty fish. Nicely done. Nicely done. All right, let him go. What was your bait of choice this time? A gambler thump shrimp cut in half. Nice. About an inch and a half long. Trying to catch a little lanes. This one said otherwise. Oh my god! Giant. <laughs> Huge of you. That's a porgy. See that bait? Oh, that Dude, that is high dollar bait right there. What a porgy. That's a stud. That's a stud. All right, guys, as you saw, all of these techniques work very, very well. Justice. James, myself, and my dad caught way too many red snapper. It was way too much fun. But every single one of these techniques will work on the given days and given currents. But I hope you guys liked today's video. If you want to book a trip with us and red snapper fish, I will leave the link to my website in the description below as well as my Instagram. But that's all I got for you guys today. If you would, click the link right here to subscribe and over here to watch more videos. And I'll see you on the next one.